Uh, it's been suggested, Gary, that my previous video was unnecessarily brief and that I didn't deal with a lot of the points that you raised. Um, so I'll just make this one. Um, your contention that the outside world should trump the inside world, i.e., <coughs> I, if I read you correctly, my um, obligation to myself should be less um, imperative than my obligations to the outside world, to, that, uh, to which I answered that uh, if that's the case, uh, then you're essentially creating a situation of surfeit of obligation, um, where everybody is more, everybody in the universe is more obliged to uh, the outside world than to themselves, um, even though there are plenty of things that no one can actually assist you with. A lot of your life goes on in here, and I would say that, um, well, almost all of it goes on in there. Not just a lot of it, almost all of it. So. Yeah, um, and how much of my obligation to the outside world can I actually make manifest? Altruism has its limits. As I said uh, in another video that I made today, I made three today, including this one, um, that old thing about if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem is a ghastly thing when you think about it in a certain way because it points to the pitfalls of altruism. You try to actually help the world, and you assume that what you're doing is helping the world, whereas you may not be helping the world, and you end up in a situation where your obligation might lead to nihilism. You may never actually be in a position to fulfill your obligations that you still have. You have a sense of obligation that you cannot fulfill. That's the previous video, and I've already covered this. Um, the second point that gets that, that, that you raised, and this is something that I find very interesting, the idea that guilt cannot be imposed. I don't believe that for a second. Um, a lot of people have said that you only, or it's even been suggested, and I'm, if people don't agree with what I'm saying, they're free to correct me. Uh, it's been suggested that it's impossible to feel guilty for something you didn't do. Now, I totally disagree with that, and I, I can only assume that people who say something like that are not really talking about the same thing as I am when we're, when we suggest, when we're talking about guilt, when we use the word guilt. Um, <clears throat> there's an interesting story about guilt by the absolute master writer of guilt, Franz Kafka. Uh, it's The Trial. Um, and it's when the main character, K is talking to the prison chaplain. He's been convicted of a crime that he never has explained to him by a trial who never that, that never identifies itself. Um, uh, he's, uh, the, the prison chaplain says to him, uh, it is not necessary to accept everything here as true. One must only accept it as necessary. Now that, to me, is the ultimate quote encapsulating this kind of guilt that is not actually attached to anything one has actually done. Uh, it, it's just a sense of being less pure than the rest of the community. A sense that one is guilty in a existential sense, I suppose, uh, or just guilty in a general sense. Or, just to simplify this, let's assume that um, K in the story of the trial is simply a person who has been falsely convicted of a crime that he didn't commit. Okay. Now, he knows he didn't commit it, but now he knows, and let's say that he didn't, um, he was like that, uh, the big uh, uh, black fellow in The Green Mile who was convicted of killing two white children, even though he hadn't done it. He understands and he can feel the thoughts in people's heads when he's going to the electric chair. Let's say that the guy in Kafka's trial is in the same situation, and he feels the hatred of these people towards him. He knows that everybody uh, believes that he did this. Let's say I didn't do something. I know I didn't do it. And everybody, including everybody who is important to me, believes that I did it. 
In fact, everybody knows that I did it. That's the kind of guilt I think Kafka is referring to here. And that's why people in situations like that where it's implied in, again, in the Green Mile, that the gentle soul who's about to be killed in the electric chair is rather glad that it's happening because he doesn't want to live in a world where anyone believes that he actually did these things. Being falsely accused of something is bad enough, but becoming convinced that everyone else believes it, I should think that's even worse than feeling guilty for a crime you actually did but nobody knows about. The Telltale Heart by uh, Edgar Allan Poe is the story of the guy who knew that he had murdered somebody, but he, but no one else knew, but his conscience drove him mad. Um, the case in the trial, Kafka's trial, or in the Green Mile, is one in which the main character knows that he didn't do it, but he knows that everybody else, especially people that he cares about, believe that he did. That's the kind of guilt that Kafka is an expert at portraying. And that's the kind of guilt that can be imposed. And it's often imposed on people very, very early in their lives, before they even understand what guilt even is. It's something that I think is the kind of thing that leads to existential guilt and the kind of guilt that wrecks lives. Um, that kind of thing seems to be behind the story of eating the apple and being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. You don't even have to actually commit a crime to be guilty in that sense. So, yes, guilt can be imposed, and the type that is imposed is, if anything, worse than the kind that actually accompanies an actual overt deed. Guilt is a truly gigantic phenomenon. Um, it seems to underpin everything in our entire society especially our system of ethics or morals or whatever you want, whatever word you want to use. And again, that the fact that it does um, underline, or underlie rather, everything is why the priest tells Kay it is not necessary to accept everything as true. One must only accept it as necessary. <laughs> We've built in the heart of our entire civilization a monstrous assumption that whatever harm takes place, um, there is a question of not just doing something disruptive, but you've actually committed evil. It is necessary for us to find a guilty party for everything. Well, if Kafka had lived another 20 years, he probably would have understood what that kind of guilt leads to. I hope this fills a gap that uh, was might have been left by my all-too-brief previous video. Thank you.